でででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででででFor making them look better and play better in VR so you can enjoy the full experience. Okay, let's dive into this. Show you some important oculus settings uh, if you're playing with an oculus headset these are uh, quite important i think uh, you head to your devices and you i don't know how to say this in english but by default this is on automatic which gives you an, a resolution of 4128 by 2096 if you have 72 hertz enabled and the higher uh, the hertz you have enabled, the lower uh, your um, resolution will be. Personally, I choose 72 hertz, and that's just because uh, I'm sure that will perform decently. I don't really see any big difference between these, as you mostly walk around in uh, Hitman and you don't really do those kind of... Uh, fast movements right mostly so i stick to 72 i've uh, chosen to uh, edit the resolution pushing it all the way to the top and this does make a difference when playing also i access my oculus debug tool you can find this uh, by googling it as i always say use google that's a simple way of finding things oculus debug tool location and this is where it will be automatically stored on your computer you can go ahead and copy this if you're on windows 10 like i am um, head into one of the i don't know i've been playing around with resident evil 8 <laughs> go in here paste there you see you go to program files oculus support oculus diagnostics and there you have the oculus debug tool and what i i have done is that i have made a shortcut to my desktop uh, in here you want to disable asynchronous space warp because that creates some uh, ugly graphics in the game uh, like warped image uh, it is not pretty uh, and you want to turn your link sharpening on this is actually, this makes quite a difference, I found, uh, turning on your link, link sharpening. It is by default on auto, but it seems like it some places turns off the link sharpening, giving you a terrible image. So just put that on enabled. Uh, my current settings for Hitman, by default, I think this was all on low, because the creators recommend while playing in VR that all the settings are on low if you have, have the bare minimum which is uh, an AMD 5700 XT uh, let's see here <laughs> Hitman VR specs yeah requirements and here we go to support and here they say you should have a minimum of 2060 super or 5700 XT level of detail either high or ultra because the pop-in textures in this game are quite aggressive and look terrible in VR uh, the texture quality can be on medium I don't really feel like you downgrade the game that much by placing it on medium and it runs just fine uh, this I've placed on four medium 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 off off motion blur looks terrible in VR uh, the game runs well um, 
and I have the bare minimum and I have level of detail on high. So the game runs much better than uh, IO Interactive thought it would. <laughs> so uh, let's see, just checking here if I'm recording. Yep. Um, the game is really awesome if you get it to run the way it's supposed to. Switch to VR. Very intuitive and a lot of good stuff about this game. However, it's hidden <laughs> in a lot of settings. Like the things I'm doing right now should just be done by default by the game itself. So that you do, shouldn't have to find a YouTube video with someone explaining this to you. Um, head over to your options while in the in the game in the main menu not while well in the game because when you're in the game you won't get access to these settings go to graphics uh, and here you can choose your vr quality because this is by default on base you want to change this to best okay and uh, we can try to have a side-by-side -side comparison in one of the maps uh, I will show you how the game looked by default and how it looks with the settings that I've put in. Um, and I think some good places to explore with these settings which should be uh, somewhere with a lot of lighting and some things to see in the distance. Mumbai is a good place to use as like a base to show off um, how different the game looks with these settings. Uh, I'm going to show some settings in Steam as well. Uh, so, here we're loading into the game. So here we go. Uh, this does look pretty decent with the resolution pumped up to the max and it performs totally fine. Like there's nothing uh, happening to the performance. And if I didn't have the level of detail on high, this in the distance would look awful. Um, and this is a good place to see it all because you have like the sunset, you have a little bit of sun, you have like a lot of things happening in the distance. You should be able to see the resolution quite well uh, with the Mumbai level as like a base there are probably other maps i could explore as well but this is a good base um the dartmoor manor i think it's called we'll check that out as well because that looks looks like a place where you could see the resolution quite well so this is how it looks when i've made the changes right and here i've made a whole bunch of changes we're going to check out how it looks by default as well, uh, but for now we're going to find a different map. Here we go. So even with, <laughs> with the changes I've made, things in the distance looks kind of fuzzy. And I've made a lot of changes, but you don't have that aggressive pop-in. And it still runs totally smoothly, and I'm on the bare minimum. Like, I'm on the bare minimum, and I've pushed the texture detail too high like you don't want to see how this looks on low <laughs> with texture detail uh, and you see like there's a quite aggressive pop in here I did, don't know if you saw what happened to the stones in the back there and with the trees and everything like it's very visible the pop in that's why why I said if if your system can handle it you should push it to ultra uh, the texture detail. If your hit, if your system can handle it, play with ultra. Uh, personally, I don't really feel my system can handle it. So, um, but mostly it can. So the only map where I really feel like, whoa, this is tanking my uh, GPU, that's actually Mendoza. As you see, a, a lot of things happening in the distance, and especially if you look this way, <laughs> then then everything just like the performance is just terrible when you look in this direction. So that's probably because they've actually made all of that in the background there, <laughs> like the church is actually there or something. I don't know. 
maybe it's some weird way they tried to make the bushes uh, appear but either way um, this could be a good place to check out how the game performs and only in this level I change the settings let's see here whoops gun uh, <laughs> I change my settings to uh, I cannot edit VR quality while in the game. I can edit level of detail and change that to medium or low and then it performs just fine uh, in Mendoza. So let's see. There we go. Ta-da! No lag. So, um, but this is the only level only level where that's necessary uh, if I change everything now to what how it looks by default so by default for one thing uh, I have to go into oculus right and I have to change this to how I usually play and that is with 90 Hertz and this on automatic so then I have to restart oculus for that to take effect There we go uh, and then we're in the game now it's booted up with how it looked by default with my setup because I meet the bare minimum requirements with my 5700 XT and this was by default on base right and now I'm curious uh, whether or not this actually works and there we go so, uh, things up close look just fine, right? <laughs> yeah, but I think you can see from the video capture as well how things in the distance actually look. And it, I didn't walk through here um, while playing last time, but those pop-ins you saw there does not appear when you put the level of detail on high. Uh, and there's a lot of popping. You see, like in the distance there, a whole bunch of buildings aren't even there. And it's really, like, you see all the popping is quite aggressive. Um, and it looks really, really fuzzy. Uh, I hope I'm able to capture this properly with, uh, with, um, with my video. Yeah, here you see. Um, so this is what the game should have looked like, like the first time I booted it up. And uh, I don't know if you see the pop-in uh, as well as I'm seeing it right now, but there's a church there in the distance which hasn't even appeared, right? And hopefully this looks just as fussy to you as it does to me. And this is probably like how it looked on the PlayStation VR because uh, the resolution on the PlayStation VR as well as how uh, limited the PlayStation 4 is compared to my gaming PC uh, yeah so here we have Dartmoor Manor yeah the guns look great up close though yeah. hopefully this looks as bad to you as it does to me as the headset the worst thing to me is actually the pop-in, <laughs> like pop-in textures, because those are really terrible in this game. Like when I made my Red Dead Redemption 2 video in VR, I talked about how the pop-in really didn't matter in that game, because it was so discreet. This is the total opposite, like this is not discreet at all. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, now we're gonna Head into the, our settings and change it back. I am not hating on IO Interactive, I just want people to experience this magnificent game in all of its glory because uh, I really think Hitman VR is one of the coolest experiences and if you can just uh, fix the resolution 
it offers some seriously beautiful visuals, like extremely pretty places to uh, see in this game. And some of the mechanics aren't really that fleshed out, it's just like they made a, a VR, uh, flat screen to VR version. But seriously man, you really should experience this if you can just apply those small little tweaks. So, here we go. And uh, now I'm gonna show you how I prefer to play Hitman VR, which is with virtual desktop. First thing you'll need is you'll have to go into your con controller bindings and find a binding. So what I did was I found this one. I, I don't know how to say this. This was a German fellow who made uh, a binding for touch controllers uh, for Hitman VR uh, via Steam. And this changes some of the buttons. Here it says recenter left Oculus menu key. Um, info left thumb for better usage with virtual desktop. And that's what I'm using, right? You see that? So uh, I didn't actually change anything. Another thing. Is the video settings so here I made a custom resolution for Hitman 3 where I pump it up quite significantly uh, this does impact your performance a little bit when playing in um, Steam and here we have the game and here as well I, th I do really think that it looks prettier with virtual desktop uh, but it doesn't perform as well so that's that's one of the things to take into account uh, however given how much prettier it looks I usually don't push this as high as 250 I stick around like 200 somewhere uh, I go to the video settings and I go to the video settings for this program which is Hitman 3, and I'm, uh, I adjust it to a higher value, right? So now, it, now it's 30 by, uh, yeah, 3000 by 3000 something, like 3K, basically. And that does take a little toll on my system to uh, display it that way. It takes a little while, as you see, my hands now don't look the way they're supposed to, that's because uh, Steam hasn't applied the resolution properly yet and there we go there it is and it looks better like it looks a little bit sharper it looks a little bit cleaner uh, in Steam however it does feel a little bit more laggy so I've actually gone back to playing it in Oculus but it does look more pretty as I said in my opinion so we'll go grab our gun no that was not what I wanted to do. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and uh, check out the other maps as well. So uh, here we're seeing the game in virtual desktop with Steam. So I don't get as high resolution here uh, without sacrificing a little bit of performance. However, things in the distance look cleaner. Uh, when I'm using Steam. That's my personal opinion. However, there are some graphical oddities, like there's this weird like popping on the sides when playing with Steam, and that's not there when playing with Oculus. So... But it does run fairly well. Um, and like now, the game looks 
totally fine for me. Like, now there's nothing wrong with uh, the graphics, in my opinion. So, here we are in Mendoza, now with Steam. Um, and from here, actually... This is one of the maps where you really need to play it with ultra settings uh, on the, uh, what's it called, texture detail. Because uh, here the, the pop-in is just extreme, like, yeah, but sure. Things in the distance look much, much prettier with the uh, Steam VR. And it seems to run better as well. There we go. There she is. I mean, this game is beautiful in the headset when you just apply the right settings. It is, like, it is beautiful in the headset. We're gonna walk through some of the most important things to know about while actually gaming. So the thing is, like, personally, I often stand when playing VR, especially if I have the option to play it with motion controllers. However, this is, game is a seated experience. I'm going to show you what happens when I try to stand up <laughs> and play the game. Personally, right now I'm sitting down. So we're going to go ahead and stand up. Welcome to the barge and uh, you can recenter by pressing down your controller and looking ahead. So in my headset right now, this looks beautiful. It looks crisp and clear and... Uh, this is when the link sharpening is really working, right? Uh, and here you see what happens when I turn around while standing up. You see that? So it really looks awful, okay? So one thing is On do not stand up and turn around physically, because then that will happen to you. And we're gonna go ahead and sit back down. There we go. Uh, Recenter while looking ahead, and now turn around with my controller, and that looks perfect, right? Here you should. Um, whoops! Ah, I always do that. <laughs> go into your options, VR comfort, and change your turn mode to smooth turning. Uh, if you can handle it, um, some people uh, get sick from smooth turning, and then you also have snap turning, which is pretty okay. Uh, you can adjust your turn degree as well as your turn speed, so you can adjust this to anything. Uh, find how you like it best, and you can have a combination of smooth and snap, right? So the options here are actually quite good. Um, and there's the part about how you uh, move in the game. Uh, you can not actually turn with your head, but you can. It, you can do so that it follows your hand. So and then it's your left hand it follows, I think. Yeah, your left hand. So if I run, I can use my left hand. To change the run direction it says I can use my head but that's not true so even if you have it on turning with your head you have to turn with your hand that's just how it is at the current state okay melee weapons do not use these you uh, activate it by holding down your trigger and let's just see here yeah, and this is supposed to stab her. What the hell? It actually worked. Um, but most often it does not work. So we'll just try here to actually stab and you see what happens. Yeah, actually this time around it actually worked. It's always not like that, right? When you're trying to show someone something, then it actually works. So it's kind of like, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. However, I would recommend you just leave it out. To aim, that is awesome. Throwing 
is really satisfying in this game. As well as, of course, shooting. Okay, uh, however, we're gonna walk you through the piano wire. This thing, never bring it with you. Cause, you see, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Leave the piano wire out completely. It does not work, okay? I mean, sometimes it probably works, but uh, well, I'll try again to see if I can show you this. So play seated, use your analog stick to move around to have a good experience, right? Uh, melee weapons, I would recommend just not using them. And if, if you're gonna use melee weapons, they tend to work better if while moving your hand downward in this kind of a motion or to the sides in some cases. But rarely they work when you like move your hand forward. Like if I, ah, so this time it actually worked. Maybe they actually patched that, I'm not sure. But it always works when you're uh, like making a downwards movement, as you saw there. Right? And uh, throwing usually works if you aim with your throwing hand and... Yeah, you see? There's a certain level of jank to this, so maybe, maybe you want to just leave your melee weapons out of it. I don't know, but um, personally, I really enjoy melee weapons. So this thing you should leave at home always. <laughs> you have to press down both triggers to make it actually work. And here you go. Nothing happens, okay? Oh yeah, wow, it worked! Like, come on, man. Just leave it at home. Leave it in your little uh, hitman home. <laughs> yeah, fucking ninja or something. So there you have it, folks. Um, if you play with these tricks, uh, I think you'll have a better experience than if you don't. Okay, there you have it folks, Hitman 1, 2 and 3 running in VR. I hope today's video was useful for you. If so, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Catch you on the next one.